Welcome back. Shares of PayPal are surging this morning off the back of a beat on the top and bottom lines. You can see there it's up better than 7%. John Rainey, PayPal CFO, joins us now from San Francisco. John, good morning. Good morning, John. It's good to be on the show. Well, pl plenty to talk about as far as earnings concerns. We want to do that. But first, got to ask you about Libra. That's been in the news. PayPal was the first arguably major brand to drop out of the Libra Association. The statement that you guys put out, though, said uh, at this time uh, that you're not going to participate. Was there something wrong with Libra itself, or was it more the political and regulatory heat around it at this stage? Well, I think it's important to understand, John, that uh, we were never actually part of the Libra Association. We signed a non-binding letter of intent as an expression of interest because we share Facebook's mission to democratize the financial services for those that are underserved around the world. And so we're very much aligned there. Our decision to pull, pull out or, or not go forward with the Libra Association, though, is based solely upon um, our focus and decision to focus on our priorities at PayPal. I was asking about the adjustment in your full year guide. Uh, the midpoint, a little bit higher from my read than a quarter ago, still below what analysts were hoping for in the first half of the year. But walk us through what's improving uh, in your growth areas and what's still uh, not quite working as well as some hoped. So we actually see acceleration in several aspects of our business. As I was saying earlier, in the quarter, our volume and revenue both accelerated. We, we had 27% increase in, in TPV, which is our measure of payment volume in our business. And uh, when we look across the, the globe and at our various products, like really there's a consistent growth in all aspects of our business. And it gave us uh, the confidence to go out and actually give an early indication of how we're thinking about next year. And so we're pretty excited about what we're seeing in our business. There, there's strong growth all around. John Venmo, definitely a big focus for investors. Uh, I see, based on the numbers last night, on track to rake in about $400 million in annualized revenue, 35% of users now being monetized. Longer term, how does that continue to play out and grow? Yeah, so we're, uh, Morgan, uh, exceptionally excited about the, the growth that we're seeing in Venmo and really the attraction that it is to our customer base, being a, a social payments platform for that millennial demographic. We grew volume 64% in the quarter. And this year, we'll transact $100 billion in volume on the Venmo platform. Our focus is really to continue to create great user experiences, to provide additional experiences for that customer base. And eventually, we'll get it to where is a profitable element of our business. But our focus very clearly right now is on growth. Hey, John, you know, for so long, uh, there were magazine covers about the death of cash, cash is dying, cash is dead. And now it feels like we're in this period where whether it's Venmo or some of your competitors, the legacy credit card companies, you look at transaction growth. I just wonder where, you, where do you think cash is right now in terms of use and in terms of priorities in the customer's head? Sure. Well, you know, we've been talking about this uh, uh, this phenomenon or trend for years now, and, it, and it's here, like we experience it today. There are two major secular trends that are taking place. One is the digitization of payments, and the second is the growth or proliferation of mobile devices. And it's where those two come together that really create opportunities for companies like PayPal to really expand the suite of financial services to large swaths of the population that are, that are really underserved by by you know, how we characterize that today. There are something like two billion people in the world that don't have access to things that you and I take for granted, like a check-in account or a savings account. And the, the unique aspect of those two billion people is that roughly 70% have a mobile device. And so with, with that combination together, we can put all of the power of a bank branch and all the financial services in the palm of their hand. It's interesting to hear you talk about that because certainly this whole idea of all the people, the billions of people in the world that are unbanked right now is, is very much in focus after Mark Zuckerberg testified on the Hill yesterday. Now, I realize not pursuing uh, Libra or joining that association, you've pulled away from it. But in terms of that discussion around the unbanked, what does the opportunity look like more specifically in terms of those services for PayPal? Sure. Well, if you look at our footprint today, Morgan, we're strong in some of the more industrialized countries like, like the U.K., like the U.S., Canada, Australia. 
Uh, but we're less strong in some of these faster growth regions of the world, like in India, like places in Latin America, certainly Africa. And that's where really we can take our value proposition and, and the digitization of payments and give those people access to financial services and importantly, access to the online world that they can't experience today without some uh, financial instrument to pay online. And this is where I think PayPal's value proposition really shines. And that, that leads to my question about Apple Pay, uh, recent news that it's overtaken Starbucks for in-store mobile payments, and they're bumping more and more up against what you guys do, whether it's PayPal or Venmo. Do you guys have to get more in the messaging payments stream, which is clearly what Apple is after, what Zuckerberg said he's after, to, to grow in emerging markets and to counter a challenge from the likes of Apple? Well. Look, John, competition is something that we're very familiar with. This is an exciting industry. It's fast growing, and, and that invites a very competitive landscape. And it's something that I think we're well equipped to deal with and have demonstrated that consistently. You know, in the face of the competitive landscape that we see today, we're still growing at a rate that is roughly 2x all of e-commerce. And we see the engagement of our consumers consistently increase about 10% year on year each quarter. That said, as we look across the, the ecosystem of people that are competing, many of these people, like Apple, we actually partner with in many ways. We process a number of their transactions each year. And so that's what we've enabled by becoming a, an open digital payments platform. And we think that for us, the addressable market is so much larger by taking that path.